Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live stream. I hope you're all doing good today. So today we're gonna be turning up one of the cotton ball blanks. Um, so I got all these things prepped and surprisingly enough, they drilled quite well. <laughs> uh, so these are the ones I actually, I tubed all of these cause I wasn't sure exactly what was going on, but I, I also just wanted to, uh, you know, drill the material on all of these blanks. And to be honest, they all drilled fine. Uh, which is kind of weird. So we got a couple of extra blanks there. Um, I chose the ones that had the least of these kind of little pockets and things. Um, what these are is like areas where the cotton ball didn't uh, absorb, uh, you know, resin fully. So it's kind of like just a cotton ball in there. <laughs> so toss that one out. Um, this one just, eh, it didn't seem like it had a lot of cotton balls in it. Actually, all these little white things might be cotton balls. I don't know. Um, and then this green one, it just had so much clear uh, areas in it for a tubed kit blank uh, or pen. I, I just kind of didn't really want to mess with it. So I haven't touched that one, but um, we did get one of these uh, kind of blue and uh, I guess there is white in there or something. I, actually, I think that's interference blue that we went with. So I don't know. Like I said, this one just kind of doesn't really look like there's a lot of, I don't know. I guess there are cotton balls in there because there's little pockets. I don't know. Anyway, we got those guys. And then we got a couple extras, but just in case, uh, I have uh, extras ready to go just in case this thing explodes or something, I don't know. Uh, but what we chose, we did a poll, and this was one of the ones that I'm, I'm almost certain that this was one that was made with alcohol ink, which is kind of weird because it was already kind of saturated with, with you know alcohol ink. Um, I guess the alcohol part probably evaporated already, but I don't know. I mean, it seemed like it actually had resin in it. So um, that one's kind of cool looking. So that's what we're going to turn up. So it should be kind of fun. So let's switch back to this view real quick and see. Looks like blood and snow. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of, well, I used orange alcohol ink on this. So it's kind of orangey. I don't know. It's kind of cool looking. I, I went with this one. Uh, this one had some, some pretty big, like, like, uh, clear areas in it. I must have dumped some clear in this one. So I just figured I'm going to go with this one. This one has clear parts in it too right there. Uh, and we, when we turn into it, it might have more. I did use a white tube on this, uh, but I didn't paint the, like this, it's dead clear. So you would have to actually paint the inside of the, the blank. I didn't do that on these. I just, I kind of wanted to see what was going on anyway. So it should be kind of fun. So, and I apologize. I, I totally thought that I had this thing set up yesterday. And I walk in here and I'm looking in my, the, like the, the interface thing and I'm like, where, oh, I didn't set the stream up. So I had to do that kind of quick uh, earlier today. So let's see, who was here first? Paul was here first and Tim, nice. And then Melissa was there, Mark, Lelia, Jim, Carl's here and Kid Cooper, of course. And let's see here, I can't say, oh, UFC fanatic. Nice. And refined by James. Morning from Australia. Nice. Thanks for joining us. All right. So I thought it'd be kind of fun uh, because I finally found a, a converter. I thought I would ink this up and we can get, do a little bit of test writing real quick before we start turning uh, a, a pen. So let's switch to the overhead view. And I don't know, for people that Maybe you don't really know a lot about fountain pens. I don't, I'm not an expert. I, I've just started doing this stuff. Uh, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to, to play with this. So I have Conklin Antique Turquoise ink. Uh, and you can get this one from uh, Turner's Warehouse. That's where I got it. And here's the, this is the, the latest kitless pen that I've made with one of my zebra blanks. Of course, those are available on my website if you want to turn a zebra. All right, so I've taken out the, the nib section. I don't need the cap either. So all you do with these converters, and this just holds ink, um, is you just plug it in and, and you pop it onto the back. So let me actually take this apart for anybody that doesn't really know how these things work. Let me take apart the nib. So basically all you're doing is you're, you know, the, the nib is, is sitting in this section and all you're doing is pushing this thing into the back end and, and connecting it, you know, and it's just a hole you connect it onto the, the back of this thing and just push it on basically. 
So it would be sitting inside there. So just, just so you guys, you know, anybody that doesn't know, um, has an idea what, what's going on with the, uh, you know, these converters and how all this stuff works. So I'm just gonna put that into my section, pop this thing in, and I wanna make sure that I've gotten it seated well. All right. Then you're gonna push the little plunger down because what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna suck the, the ink in. So you want that plunger all the way down. And you're gonna basically bury this to the section. Um, it, it's gonna suck up ink into the, into the feed here. So let's see here. And it's kind of a little bit of a messy business, but that's cool. You can kinda go in and out a little bit, getting some of that air out. You can get a nice full, full amount. And like I said, it's a little bit of a messy business. You don't wanna wipe off your stuff a little bit there. And you're gonna get it all over your fingers. <laughs> so if you don't want ink on your fingers for a few days, um, definitely put some gloves on. Uh, but that's all you gotta do. And then we will just screw this back into the pen. Uh, and one of the nice things, so the ink is just like a water-based ink. Um, it, I haven't found a way to get it off of your fingers. And what I've seen from most fountain pen users is they got colored fingers all the time. <laughs> so, uh, but it'll just kind of wear off after a couple days of normal washing and all that. I got a, a nice, a decent little uh, uh, piece of paper, a little notebook. I got that from Goulet Pens. So let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. More. There we go. So, and I haven't tuned or touched this nib yet. Oh, there we go. It started quick. So you can do like sideways. Do different things to see how it's running. Man, this thing's writing really nice. Uh, one test that I always see these people do is like reverse writing, doing it upside down. This one's not really wor working too well. Reverse writing, kind of digging in. I think I need to do a little bit of sanding on that nib on the top there. Um, and you can make little boxes and you can do like little kind of quick writing. I don't know how they do all that stuff, but this thing writes really well. The, let's see, what is it? The quick brown box jumps over the lazy dog, I think is what it is. Is that right? So it, it writes pretty well. Like I said, the, 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 the top of the nib is scratchy. Kind of wants to dig in a little bit. There, it's, it's kind of reverse writing a little bit. But it's kind of, there's, there's scratchiness and it kind of digs into the paper here and there. So um, to fix that, and again, I'm not an expert on this stuff. I've just watched a YouTube video or two. <laughs> uh, Chad showed me this also. So you can take uh, like a really high grit, um, uh, like a sanding paper type thing. And this is one of those Zona papers, the blue. And so, like I said, the, the top feels kind of scratchy. So what I'm gonna do is just like sand it out a little bit. And you can do this while it's inked up just to try and kind of break some of that scratchiness. Let's see if that helped out. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. A little bit better. Let me, let me do a little bit more. Still doesn't really want to reverse right too much. And you don't want to just keep it flat. You want to kind of move it around and um, you don't want to just work one area when you're doing the sanding, even with a super high grit sanding paper. Well, I don't reverse right anyway, so it doesn't really matter.
Working pretty good though. Not too shabby. I do need to order a bunch more uh, nibs and sections, but there you have it. So let's uh, zoom out a little bit. There's the, the zebra pen. It's inked up and writing pretty well. Not too shabby. Got to get this thing lined up right. There we go. Cool. So not too bad. I'll be starting on another custom pen here soon. I'm kind of in the middle of playing with the, trying to get the, the metal lathe set up and running. I finally got a quick change tool post. Now I got to set up all the tools on the, the quick change tool holder things and all that stuff and then kind of start playing with that. The tough thing is I've kind of gotten used to making these things on the, the wood lathe. And so now I got to kind of relearn a little bit. I, I know I went and took a, a class with Chad, but it's one of those things where you gotta got to kind of do it for a, a little bit. And it's been a while since I took that class. Uh, and we've had to, you know, kind of get the lathe, the metal lathe up and running still, do work on it. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a longer project getting that thing going and, and getting stuff all ready. But I'm looking forward to kind of working on that. I, to be honest, I think I'm probably going to do a lot of the work on the wood lathe. Um, the only thing that you're really gaining with a, a metal lathe is a little bit more precision, but I've made lots of pens at this point on the wood lathe and it works just fine. So as long as you get the right tools, um, custom pens are easy to do on a wood lathe. So anyway, hey, Chris is here. How's it going? Nice. Let's see here. Yeah, hey, Kim's here too. Yeah, I set this thing up late on accident. Um, I, I meant to do, I thought I, I honestly thought I did it yesterday <laughs> or, or Wednesday or what, what day is this? Yeah, yesterday, Friday. Um, but I didn't. Lewis is here too. Nice. That looks like an opportunity to leave. Yeah, that's the one thing about fountain pens is they're, they're a little bit messy. Especially if you like tip things over or do whatever. So uh, don't do inking and all that kind of stuff just on a, a, like a nice wood desk that you kind of really like or something that could get stained. Um, get like a mat or something like that um, to do <laughs> all your inking on. I think it's... Yeah, well, you don't really need a needle. Um, I, I have them and, and you can use them for certain things, but uh, realistically you actually want to, uh, it, I think it's kind of better to do it the way that I did that through the feed. That way you're getting um, ink into the feed. You're like kind of priming the feed a little bit. And so it'll, it'll work right away um, doing it that way. So it, you, don't, you don't need uh, needles or anything like that as long as you have one of those converters that, that sucks it in. And there's other kinds of pens out there that have different kind of filling mechanisms and all that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes, uh, so, I did order some sample ink vials, <coughs> excuse me. And so you may, just to make sure you can get all the ink out of this thing, and, and, and when you get to the bottom of a bottle, um, that may be a good time to pull out a needle. Um, and you can use those same needles that I, I use on the, the stream for casting stuff. Uh, you know, these, these goodies. So if you're into casting and doing all that stuff, uh, you can just use these ones, the blunt nose needles. Um, some of the people have mentioned that you can actually just get one. I think it's in a, oh, I forget what it is. It's like a children's cough medicine or something like baby's cough medicine. They have one and they even have like, a, I think a longer needle with it, but it's like the perfect size to, to fit in all that stuff. So who knows? Uh, you, can, you can do it that way. Christine is here, the Valley Wood Turner and Stumpy. Cool. All right, so let's uh, let's get this thing turning over on the lathe. Get, see how these cotton ball pen blanks turn out. Like I said, I, I don't think I have no plans to to use cotton balls in blanks. I don't really think it's the the unless you really needed this specific kind of blob looking thing. Um, I don't know that it's particularly amazing in any way or, or useful, but. You know, we tried it. We had to see how it worked out. So I got my between center turning setup going here. Get the tailstock locked down. Bring up our tailstock here. So we got a dead center in the the headstock side, and we got a live center that rotates uh, on that side. And then we have our between center bushings, the TBC bushings. 
Um, and you can get these at uh, Turner's Warehouse or tbcbushings.com. Um, that's actually where I'm pretty sure like all of my bushings that I use came from. Um, uh, good quality made in the USA stuff. Um, and uh, he can, Brian can over there can even custom, oh, that was, whew, that was nice. Uh, he can custom make some for you. Like if you got like a special kit or something like that. Um, and he also has the conversion ones where, let's see, where am I? Sometimes, I don't mention this a lot. I don't use them a whole, whole lot of the time because I kind of use a lot of the same kits. But let's see, is this them? If you already have a lot of bushings, the like the standard bushings for pen kits. All right, so like, let me get on camera here. So, you know, these are like the standard style bushings. Um, you don't wanna be putting these, you don't really wanna be grabbing onto these because they don't have a 60 degree uh, chamfer on them. Uh, so you don't want to just do the, you know, use those. It's not going to work as well um, with this setup using standard bushings. Oops, I just totally lost that. But there are um, adapters that you can buy, which if you don't drop them on the floor, work great. Um, so the way this works, this is one of the adapters. It's got a 60 degree cone on the inside, and then it fits into standard bushings so you know your standard bushing would fit into your blank and then you just use the adapters and um, even this is you know it's a little bit more accurate to to put the bushing you know use tbc bushings for the the kit that you're doing um, you know that's just one component then you got it between centers you know adding this on adds a little bit you know a tiny tiny amount of you know, less uh, pre precision, but it's still gonna be more precise, way more precise than, uh, um, you know, as far as like wobble and all that kind of stuff run out. It's gonna be a lot more precise than, than using a mandrel. So that way you don't have to buy a ton of uh, TBC bushings, because you know, they're not necessarily cheap. And you, if you already got bushings for everything, um, then you can just buy a set of these uh, adapters and not have to replace all your bushings. Again, though, the most precise way to go, if, if there's like certain kits that you have, that you turn a lot of, like in this case, like a Sierra, let's say you turn a lot of those or cigars, I would recommend just getting a set of the TBC bushings if you're gonna switch to this method. Um, just get the bushings for those, for the kits that you turn a lot of, and then just use the adapters on stuff that you don't necessarily, you know, turn a whole lot of. That way you can save some, some cash, some dough here and there. Yeah, the adapters are great. The only issue is you gotta have the, <laughs> the bushings. <laughs> so if you don't even have the standard bushings and they're kind of useless, but let me turn this down a little bit. That's pretty loud. Got my dust collector going here. It's kind of loud in my ears. And I feel like I gotta yell at you guys. I'm gonna break open another, another thing. All right, so got everything set up. Let's get this thing spinning. I'm using one of the negative rate cutters from Easy Wood Tools. This is the CI3 designation cutter, and then I'm just using the, the mini handle, mini finisher. center that was deforming it. Huh. Well, that's not good.
give it a little tightening there. Tighten up the centers. So it's turning perfectly fine so far. <clears throat> Let's have a look at this thing. There's a little bit of kind of fuzzing going on at the end here, which is kind of typical when you put like fabrics and things, like if you have a uh, micarta blanks, you'll kind of see that, but it's not soft. There's no, no soft areas. So somehow these cotton balls seem to have soaked up a decent amount of the, the resin, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about turning, getting rid of the collector noise, unfortunately. I mean, unless I turn it off, but I paid so much for it, I should figure I should probably turn it on. And it works so good that I really don't feel like I need to wear a mask. Um, I mean, I you know, it's probably it would probably be best to wear a mask, but it's kind of hard to talk when you're wearing a mask. But between the the suction just on the front of this thing, as well as I have a um, I don't know if you guys can see. Let's see back there. That's a when I set this system up, they recommended that I get these uh, um, floor sweeps, is what they call it. So it, it, it's open, it, it sucks. See how I, it'll suck up, you know, they're meant to be like where you just broom stuff in. You know, like a, you sweep it into there and it sucks it up. But what this does, having that down at the floor, is it creates a downward suction for, for dust, for like the really fine particles. So it's a really good system. It's kind of similar, it, you know, it's, it's the same principle as the, uh, I mean, I'm gonna take, oh, I, I'm plugged in here, hold on. I'm gonna take you over and show you the, my air filter, for anybody that doesn't, didn't see that earlier. Uh, let, me, let me put this down before I drop it, there we go. So my, my uh, Stratus air filter, this does the same job as like the square ones, the air, just the filter units, but it's pulling the air down, which is kind of an advantage. If you already have one of those ceiling hung, most people hang them in the ceilings, the square ones, you know, that's fine and, it, and it'll, it'll move the air and, and, and scrub the air and get that, those fine particles out. But the problem is it's pulling the dust up like into your face so it's kind of a better way to go to be pulling that those fine particles down if if any direction um, down to the floor is better and so having the intake down here it's quite nice on that but it's the same idea um, having floor sweeps and so I've got another floor sweep maybe can't really see it but it's kind of back down in there in that corner uh, and that was a, a recommendation uh, that was given to me by um, Oneida, actually, when I was setting up my system. They were like, we recommend, if you're gonna, you know, put a full duct system in, we recommend that you uh, get these floor sweeps uh, for two reasons, actually. One is that, like I said, pulling the air down, the dust to the floor. Uh, but the other thing is, it also just anchors those the ends of the legs, you know, so that you can actually like anchor it to your floor basically which I gotta be honest I never actually did bolt it down but it's more sturdy basically but it also moves the air in that direction so just a couple of tips thoughts if you're gonna do like air filters and things like that that Stratus is a pretty nice system I got links to that in my uh, uh, definitely have a link to it in the on my Instagram 
I'm not sure if there's one in the description of this video or not, though. But you can just look up Stratus Air Filter and check that out if you're interested. I'm not really being aggressive. I'm not being very light. It's kind of medium, medium aggression on the pen blanks today. But they're turning just fine. I mean, there's not even air pockets in this. Crazy. So one thing that, that because this was one of the alcohol ink ones, I'm, I'm almost certain it was because you can see, you know, there are areas where the, the dye bled into the, the white resin. So I'm, I'm almost 100% certain that these are the alcohol ink cotton balls. Uh, in, in fact, I am certain because the it, it, the other ones would have been dyed with cactus juice, and uh, the ones that I didn't bake, like actually, uh, you know, the cactus juice, I didn't actually bake it in. Um, that one was all leaky and disgusting. I actually have it right here. I wiped it up a little bit, but this one was cactus juice uh, that I didn't actually cure and it like leaked out all over the place. It was disgusting. So there was like cactus juice all over because if you don't bake it, then it's not, <clears throat> it's just a liquid and, and adding resin to it's not gonna cure it in any way. So the one thought that I had about these with, with the alcohol ink is I don't know if you guys know, but you know, if, if, you're, if you're trying to, if you're gonna like wipe up a spill with a rag um it's better or like i don't know if you guys do you know like wash your own cars um it, it's better rather than using a dry cloth it's better to wet it first and then it'll actually absorb more of the liquid um it's kind of like it's almost like it's kind of like priming it it just you know if it's already a little bit damp it absorbs moisture better and so I'm wondering if because this, these things already were, I don't know, I guess kind of primed, they had dye in them, you know, if they absorbed the resin better for some reason. I really don't know the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about you, Brian. <laughs> we were talking about TBC setups. Yeah, go check out go check out Brian's website. It's got good stuff.
So this end is definitely a little bit softer feeling, or like I said, it just kind of feels like there's little fraying bits. So I think what I'm going to do is let's let's see what happens if I if I hit it with a little bit of thin CA glue. See if that kind of stiffens up some of them fibers a little bit more. Let me get my tool rest out of the way. Ugh, oh, I gotta wax my bed. Let me just hit the whole thing real quick and see what happens. And I'll just give it a little accelerator on the outside there. Should have already soaked in for the most part. Ooh. Woo. All right. Uh, I don't know. Pretty much any live center works. I found this one on uh, on Amazon. I liked it because it has a carbide tip. There's just a little chunk of carbide right at the the tip of the trunk, the, the nose. And uh, in some cases, sometimes you can kind of get these ones where it kind of messes up the the live center the bushings because they're hardened and then that uh the live center tip especially if you're kind of cranking down a little bit more than you should you can kind of deform the tip so I, I usually get the carbide tipped ones but i mean really they all kind of do the same thing Uh, you can get the live and the dead center uh, at Turner's Warehouse also. They carry them. Um, and for, for the dead center, I think this one might be like a carbide tip one also, but pretty much they all work fine. Uh, you don't need to get <clears throat> too, you know, too specialized or anything. They'll all hold, uh, as long as it's got a 60 degree cone on it, which they all do. It'll uh, hold your bushings just just perfectly. I'm going to hit it again with some thin CA glue on that one end just because I want to make sure that I'm getting a nice crisp edge. I don't want like little fraying pieces. I'll just let that soak in a little bit. Oh yeah, just head down to Turner's Warehouse, definitely. Oh, you missed me by about a few hours, yeah. Tony's here. Hey, no problem, man. You're right on time. Uh, I, if, if, if it interests you, you, know, I, you don't have to, but at the beginning, the only thing you really missed was uh, I inked up my zebra, that custom zebra pen that I made. <clears throat> so I inked that up and wrote, wrote it a little bit with it if you wanted to, if, if you were so inclined. If you have no interest in fountain pens and all that stuff, then don't worry about that. All right, let's speed this back up.
I'm gonna have to do it one more time. Starts turning good. It's just, it doesn't really uh, soak, that, that sea egg glue doesn't really soak down in too far, so. Let's get that kind of. Topped off there a little bit. And we should get a pretty good cut. Uh, all that is is just a paper towel uh, that I that I I'm not really applying it. I'm just kind of dousing it on there. But this is just a full sheet, and I just rip it into smaller pieces. You never want to use an actual cloth uh, on a lathe, like like cotton or you know like fabric stuff, uh, because it can uh, wrap up if it gets caught up on there, and it'll suck your fingers in, and it ain't gonna be good. Uh, the smoothest uh, pen I've turned here, but it's getting there. A lot of times I, I kind of like to use this, the, the radius square. So I think it's a CI2R2. Um, a lot of times I can kind of smooth things out a little bit better using the square radius. And you can turn the whole pen with one of these too, I'm, you know. All right, let's see how I did, how close I am on the bushings. Well, that's pretty good. That's not bad. I think I can take a little bit more off on this side. Let's smooth that out a little bit. All right, I think we're good. <clears throat> now, the question is, do we need to put a CA finish on top? And... Kind of thinking yes. Because this stuff probably isn't going to polish up as well, so I'm just going to sand up to about four or 600 and then switch over to, uh, and then put a CA finish on top. That way everything will be nice and shiny across all surfaces. So this is 400 grit. <laughs> No, it's not going to just soak in. Um, it'll, it'll 
stiffen up the fibers. I might have to, you know, that first coat will stiffen things up and then you're just like laying coats on top of coats. It'll, it'll be fine. It's not soft, you know, it's still, it's hard to explain. It's still a, a hard material for the most part, but just a little bit kind of, the edges, you could have little kind of funky fibers hanging out. After I get done sanding this with 400, I'm gonna kind of feel it and just see how I feel about it. Cause we might be able to just get away with just polishing this thing up. In fact, let's, we can always go back and, we can always go back and add a CA finish down the road. That actually feels not too bad. So let, let's just try and polish it up. And then if we wanted to, we can always go back and put a CA finish on. <clears throat> it's a lot easier to do that than put a CA finish on and then <laughs> like reverse that, you know? So I'm gonna wipe this off with a little denatured alcohol. I can turn off the dust collection now. And you could probably just use water to wipe this off. I don't know. I've always just used denatured alcohol for some reason in between coats. And then we're gonna switch over to the wet sanding portion. And this is just one of those Zona papers. I'm actually gonna get new ones. I've been kind of using those. I don't like the Harbor sandpaper. It's just, go get a new piece if it's looking a little bit cruddy. Oh, I dropped it in there, let's see. Lucy, how's it going, Lucy? Heading to Michigan at the end of June. Ron Campbell, nice, that's cool. Yeah, he will definitely help you step up your game. He's awesome. Those That retreat, I've always kind of wanted to go to that. It just it never works time-wise and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, you'll you'll get some great instruction. And, it's, and part of it, you know, Ron and the, the crew, the people that are kind of doing the, like, teaching, um, you know, like, that's one part of it. But, like, the whole retreat, like, all the people that, that go to this, just getting to sit down with a bunch of people that are kind of like-minded like that, I mean, you're going to get a lot of information from everybody there. Ideas and things to, to look into, try out, you know. That'll be pretty fun. All right. I always recommend doing this step where you're, you're sanding along the length, the opposite direction, perpendicular to the scratches that you were doing while it was running. Um, it just works better for pla for solid surfaces, for plastics. Um, <clears throat> if you think about it, there's little little you know sandpaper is a bunch of little spikes and you're 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 putting grooves in around the the edge and so um, having that solid surface um, sometimes those little particles can kind of just end up getting into the the same trenches that you put in the, the same you know grooves and so doing that that cross crossways cross hatch sanding helps to ensure that you're getting the entire you know, surface sanded up. And, it, and at that point, the, the, the scratch marks are kind of like a, a hash pattern. And so even if you did miss a little bit, it's, it's like such a minute amount in between those um, kind of scratches that it just, it works better. You're gonna get a more even sanding and, and you're gonna get better results, I think. Um, just, I always recommend that. <clears throat> Like I said, you just you get to sit and talk to people, meet some people, learn some stuff. If you if, you know if there's demos or classes going on, you get to kind of see some new things. And I'm not pressing hard. I'm just just running this, you know, lengthwise. You don't want to. You never really want to use a lot of force when you're sanding. Regardless. 
All right, so. Get this thing dried off and, and we'll move over to the Magic Juice Polish. This thing's looking pretty good. It's kind of an interesting kit. Let, let's get you guys a kind of a straight on view a little bit here. Can kind of lined up correctly. Hopefully it'll stop wiggling. There we go. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> it's got a lot of interesting stuff going on. So like I said, there's some clear in here and, and that's there's white tube that you can see below that. And really you can kind of see through, you know, if, if I was using a brass tube, I'm pretty sure it would kind of come through on this in these orange areas. Uh, to be honest, I don't know what's going on because I, I, there's nothing that really looks like cotton ball in here. I, you know, it's kind of weird. I think we might need to turn another one just to kind of see what's going on. But that thing actually looks really cool. It's, it's a good looking, it kind of looks like one of those clownfish. <laughs> sort of. Now, now that I'm looking at it, reminds me of clownfish. All right, so let's zoom out. I'm going to plug the camera back in just so make sure I don't run out of power. There you go. Oh, you usually glue your fingers together? Yeah. Well, my, so here's, and I, when I do apply, so what I was doing was I was just dumping it on there and just kind of making sure that it, soaking up the excess underneath there. But what I do is I'll, I'll cut these things into squares and I find, or, you know, like little strips. What I do to make sure that I don't glue my fingers together is I, I fold it three times. So I've got like, you know, like three layers and and that's how i i do my ca glue but you know i don't really press particularly hard but it, it never really goes all the way through and then i just snip that off and then do the next one so it that might help just just to kind of back that up but yeah i mean gloves definitely help <laughs> you know obviously but you can still glue your fingers together if even if with the gloves so if you can just kind of wad that up enough <clears throat> you might get a little bit better or, or have less problems, let's say, with that. But it also kind of depends on which glue you're using and all, you know, all kinds of different things. Um, let's see, what am I doing here? Okay. Magic juice. One, two, three. One, two, three. Four, five, six. I think I'm actually going to put these guys over here. Oh, back in into the camera. <clears throat> All right, and I like to use the the blue shop towels for this. They're just they're less. Well, that one needs. I need a new new roll. They're a little bit less abrasive than uh, I think the other. I think those are bounty paper towels. I don't know how much it matters, but just standard paper towels are pretty abrasive. And these, uh, the Scott blue, uh, shop towels just are, they're a little bit softer, which means you're not adding scratches. I, I don't know how <laughs> abrasive paper towels are, but I'm guessing that they've got to be more abrasive than, especially when you get to the highest, um, you know, polishes. So I just figure this feels a lot softer to my fingers. So um, I just go with that. Um, again, I don't recommend using cloth like fabrics. Uh, some people do it, but you know, there's ways to do it kind of carefully. But the problem is accidents are called accidents for a reason. You didn't mean to do it. So you're better off using stuff that's not going to wrap up and 
you know, grab your finger if it does get kind of caught up. All right, so let's see here. We're going to get the speed going about 1800 or so. 17. Don't need a lot. And I like to kind of just like slow it down a little bit and then I hit the stop button. So it doesn't fling it everywhere right off the bat. And you just kind of work it in until it's until it's gone. Wipe it off. And even after the first, you know, step, the first, there's six of these guys, but even after step one, uh, one I mean, you can kind of see what's going on. It's already looking really, really polished. I still think that a CA finish probably would have, probably would have been a little bit better in this case, you know, possibly, but <clears throat> we'll see when we get to the end. I think that the you know I think that it's going to look just fine without CA you know putting a CA finish on the other way to do it is just kind of rub it in by hand and then get the gas and for some reason I always find that this step 2 tends to kind of want to grab the paper towel for some reason so I always kind of push a little harder with the step 2 I don't know why. It's stickier. Yeah, go check out the the port. It was it was pretty intricate because I did a bunch of different types of things with these. Now I can kind of see that this end is a little bit more dull. That could have possibly been the sanding that I did. I don't know. But we'll have to kind of see how this works. The end. And once again, you don't need to press hard with this either. You're just letting the letting the grit kind of work its work its way in there. It's not like it's like a friction polish. You don't need to generate heat. <clears throat> All right, we're on step four here. And uh, you can get this stuff, the Magic Juice, at Turner's Warehouse. They actually have, uh, th these are the two ounce bottles, because um, I, I use this stuff quite a bit, and so I finally just stepped up and bought the big ones. Uh, but they got a one ounce, so half of this size, which they look like this. And then they also have a, um, a, a trial or test or sample uh, set that's, I think it's like 15 bucks. So if you're like, uh, eh, this magic juice, whatever, I got my system. But if in the back of your head you're like, oh, I wouldn't mind trying that, but I don't want to buy the full set, they got that sample set. Uh, and it's, I forget how much is in it, but I mean, it's it's enough to do a few pens for sure, like a, a good handful of pens probably. Um, <clears throat> I mean, even those one ounce bottles, I mean, I didn't, I never really finished them up. Um, I use the step one through three more on, on different stuff. And so I was kind of running out of that, but I, I kind of wanted to get the bigger bottles. 
And so I just bought a set of the two ounce, but I never actually ran out of the one ounce and I had that for years. So those, the sample set probably is gonna last you a lot of pens uh, for 15 bucks, not bad for, for trying something out. A lot easier than like trying out buffing wheels because <laughs> those setups, you know, cost a few bucks. And I, I gotta be honest, I still use buffing wheels for certain things. Um, I think they're good to have and definitely for things larger than pens, bowls and things, you know, buffing is kind of the only way to go. Um, but if you're doing mostly pens, I mean, magic juice just works extremely well and you don't have to set anything else up. You just keep going. That's looking pretty good. It's not perfect. There's, there's, I uh, maybe, I didn't really, you know, put this thing under a microscope when I was, uh, after I was sanding. So, you know, it's looking, there's a few little scratch marks here and there. But, like, in this area, I think I maybe could have got it a little bit more polished down there where it was kind of being a little bit funky. This thing turned out kind of weird. I, I don't, it's, I don't even know what's exactly happening. Oh, I'm stuck. I got to unplug again. Every time I move the camera. This tripod set up all right. There we go. Baking a little bit. There we go. It looks pretty good. I, like I said, it totally reminds me of a clownfish. That's what it looks like to me. Could have done a little better on the sanding and polishing. There's, there's a few areas that I can see some scratch marks, but yeah. These were just kind of tests anyway, so not really. Oh, I, I did kind of glue the bushing on a little bit on the one end. So I just tap it on the, on the tailstock to get it off. <clears throat> I am gonna kind of sand up that end. There might be some little, little jagged shards of CA glue. I'm just, that, this is what I use mandrels for. <laughs> it's the only good thing. <sighs> just to get any C, CA glue off of the end there. In fact, I think I'm even going to take a little piece of, if I can find it here. I usually have a little piece of thousand grit sitting over here somewhere. I don't know what, what grit this is, but probably up there. Uh, there's a little bit of sharpness on the end, so I'm just going to kind of take a, a, a super high grit, just kind of round this over so it's not kind of sharp. The little bits sticking up. All right, so let's see here. I think I'm going to set this aside. We can, we can put the kit on this later. Um, what I'd like to do, I don't want to finish these, but we got a couple other blanks here. So this is the other half of that. I don't want to mess with that. But this one I know for sure has cotton balls in it because the red things are cotton balls. Um, so we can kind of test that out. This one was a cactus juice. I did kind of, I didn't fully saturate the cotton ball with cactus juice just a little bit, but that would give us a little bit of a, an example of turning cactus juice, which is not particularly awesome material. And then this one, you can see that it's all kind of crusty, right? <clears throat> this was saturated with cactus juice and then baked. Um, same, same with this, I, I, I cured the cactus juice on that one, but it was a, a lot less cactus juice. This one, I fully, like I, I like squeezed it and, and did all that kind of stuff and it was saturated with cactus juice. Um, so what I want to do, I think, is I want to just chuck this up and just show you what turning a lot of cactus juice is like. Um, it's not a, it's not like alumilite or epoxy or any of those types of things. It's a very brittle, nasty kind of <laughs> substance. Um, it's not meant to be like a gap filling type of a thing. Um, it's just kind of brittle. It's meant to be in small amounts in like cellular structure, like the fibers of, of things. 
and then when you bake it, it hardens it up. Um, but it's very small amounts and, and you really don't, you're not like turning cactus juice, but in this case you really are. There's a lot of it um, like balled up and just baked and it's just kind of a brittle, chunky, not not good stuff. So let's let's do a little bit. I'm just gonna take some passes with this so you can see what that's like. But I definitely don't recommend, you know, stabilizing something in this manner and then expecting to turn it because it's just, the surface is gonna be yucky and it's not gonna be particularly fun to turn. And it may just flat out kind of chip out on you. So let's try this one. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna go through turning the whole thing. Uh, we'll just take some passes and see what, what's going on so you guys can kind of see these things. <laughs> we like weird. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool looking. I, li I like the way that thing turned out. I'm, it's weird. Um, what, what's really weird about it though is, is it's, it feels like there's no cotton ball in there. I don't know, it's not like the other ones really. It's, it's kind of weird, but cotton balls are just wispy fibers, I guess anyway. So I don't know, it, it just seemed kind of odd at the end. All right, so let's let's try it. Let's turn this a little bit and see what happens. Uh, again, I'm not not really that enthused about it. I, I'm a little bit more enthused about this one. I want to see how this turns because we really saturated these cotton balls pretty pretty well. The red ones in there, <clears throat> and this one, like I said, it's it's not as saturated with cactus juice. So I think we'll we'll give that a spin as well and see what's going on with these things. I mean, it's turning okay, but I'm more interested once we get the, the thing rounded. So that's not turning that bad. <clears throat> but you can see the surface. Should be able to see it. It's just, it's just not a nice surface. Like you're definitely gonna have to fill and, and put CA glue and all that stuff over it. It can work. Like if you really, if you if you're just, you yeah, have to put some kind of weird material in, it'll work, but you're gonna have to do, like I said, a lot of work on the finishing side of things. Still got some kind of fuzzies, which, you know, I don't know if the resin really is going to fix that entirely. It's, it's kind of Micarta-ish. It's, it's very similar to Micarta in a way. But you can see, you know, where, where there's big chunks of the, the cactus juice, it's just kind of a harder, brittle 
nasty material. It's basically just gonna kind of fall out and you're gonna be left with little gaps. It just doesn't fill gaps like, like, a, like a resin would. So I don't need to go any further, I don't think. I just wanted to kind of share that, see how it turned a little bit. <clears throat> Let's try the, the slightly less cactus juice one. That'll be kind of an interesting comparison to that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you could use UV resin or CA, which, whichever way you want to go. Typically, I, I kind of prefer CA glue um, because it just kind of flows in a little, you know, pretty well. And uh, you don't have to, like, cook it forever. Like, it's just, you can kind of keep going and, and just hit it with accelerator, put a bunch of layers on. So I just kind of find... Uh, CA glue for a lot of that stuff is kind of easier and quicker. That's turning very well. that's just a little bit better there's there's definitely more resin you know we stiffened the fibers like made the the cotton ball kind of hard but in and around there's a lot more resin in there as well so you know a little bit of cactus juice baking it um, and and the way that I so just to let you know it's kind of hard to explain saturating it and not saturating it I'm pretty sure that I basically just used a pipette and kind of drizzled it on <clears throat> to those ones. Uh, let's see here. So, grab a pipette. So I had cactus juice dyed in a cup and I just used one of these little pipettes to kind of draw some of it up and then just squirt it on the cotton balls and try and let it, you know, soak up as much of it as possible. But I wasn't particularly worried if it was fully saturated. I just kind of wanted to get the, the color in there. Um, so you can just put a little bit on there and uh, and it seems like that that's working a lot. I mean, that's, that's a pretty decent material right there. You don't have a bunch of cracks and pits and stuff. Uh, for the other ones, for the red ones, to saturate it, I basically just squeezed it, you know, like, like stuck them in the, the, the cup of red dyed cactus juice, fully soaked it up, and then kind of squeezed it out a little bit just so it wasn't super um, dripping everywhere. Actually, some of these I didn't even squeeze out at all. Like, they were fully saturated. So... You know, not a great way to go on that, you know, doing it that way, but <clears throat> this worked pretty well. Let's take a few more cuts here, get some more, get, get it definitely down round. Not bad at all. I mean, we'd still probably want to put a CA finish on. There are a few little tiny little pits and things. But that's a, that's a much better surface than that red one. 
so viable. I mean, you know, you could do it. It's not not terrible. You know, I, the colors are not particularly uh, vibrant or anything in this. Now, let hold on real quick. I want to I want to try. I want to see what happens if we add some CA glue on top of this. I'm going to do just a tiny, tiny bit of sanding just to kind of smooth out some of these surfaces. <clears throat> Wipe it off with some denatured alcohol. I'm not going to go through and sand it up to what I usually would, but I just want to put a little bit of this, uh, maybe a couple coats on, just to kind of see what the, those colors look like. Possibly just one coat, actually. <clears throat> That'll really be all we need. Yeah, see, they're still kind of dull and not particularly amazing. Interesting, you know, kind of, but worth it? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's not that amazing. All right, last one. Let's let's do a test real quick with the uh, again. So this is the last one. This is the ones where the red <clears throat> are cotton balls that we like really fully saturated with uh, resin, dyed resin. Uh, we we just stuck the cotton balls in the cup of resin, let them soak up right away, right off the bat, and then drop them into the the mold. And then poured some blue resin around. So if you haven't seen the video of us, or, you know, the, the live stream replay of like actually casting these, you know, it might be worth looking at because even if you, you know, I don't know how many people are really gonna wanna go out and cast cotton balls. It's, you know, whatever. I don't think I'm gonna be doing it again, um, but it's an interesting kind of thing about, you know, similar materials. You might get some different ideas about, you know, how to handle things or, or you know, you, you might have some, some situation with a weird material that you want to cast where seeing some of the, the ways that we, we handle these, the different ways, uh, might, might not, you know, might be worth uh, kind of knowing. All right, let me see here. I haven't been watching you guys. Um, yeah, kind of a rose shape, that's true. Now, the, the cotton balls are the color in that last one. And the cotton balls are red in this one. see this is the one again I would kind of call it like full resin so these are turning excellent and you know the surface is hard 
it's not really fuzzy I'm not feeling anywhere so you know that that's probably the best way to do it is to fully soak the cotton balls but the problem is you're still never gonna get white ones because I think even if you put them in clear they'd still I don't know maybe clear might work I guess I never thought about that Pretty good surface, pretty hard. By far the best surface out of all of them. Gonna smooth that out a little bit, see what the surface looks like now. Yeah, that, that works pretty good. Um, and again, like I said, during that stream, I was using a Lumilite Clear Slow, which is, you know, a pretty fast setting resin. Um, <laughs> it's like an oxymoron, a Lumilite Clear Slow. Um, but, you know, you only have about 12 minutes of open time. Now, if you're going to, you know, let these things soak in like an epoxy that was like a 40 minute working time, um, you can absolutely get all of the cotton balls fully saturated um, you know, while they're sitting there. So you would pour your colors, but the issue is you're, you're still kind of stuck with, you know, you're going to have to like let them soak and then kind of transfer them. And you're, you're probably going to get some weird stuff when you pour the other, you know, colors on, they're going to kind of mix. And, you know, unless you let the cotton balls fully harden up, um, there's going to be excess kind of dripping resin, which you can kind of see it floating between here and there. So just, I, I don't exactly know what I'm trying to say with that, but it's not like you're casting a hard, rigid thing afterwards. So not too bad though. That one, this one wouldn't be a, a you know, terrible pen. Let's get some, uh, I'm going to put, just put some water on this real quick. <clears throat> That'll kind of give you an idea what it would look like polished. Not, not bad. A little bit of transparency, it looks like, in the, the cotton balls. Oh, this was the cotton ball that we added mica powder to. So you can actually kind of see some of that mica on there. I was looking at the different, because there's two different kind of colors. The ones where we just added dye, they're a little bit more see-through. I can kind of, I can see the tube in there. Um, the one that we added mica powder and again, we just mixed all this stuff into a cup and then shoved a bunch of cotton balls in there and they just kind of absorbed the stuff. But but there there is definitely some mica shimmer in there. So that, that works. That's an interesting thought. Interesting result for that that experiment. That's why we did so many different things on that that it's definitely worth, worth looking at because I can't even remember all the stuff that we did. <laughs> I was doing all kinds of experiments and different ways of doing things. All right, so I'm going to get the everything set up over here to to make a pen out of that one. I think you guys picked a good choice. I, I like the look of the. Oh, that's the wrong camera. I like the look of that uh, orange and and white one. I think the best out of all of these. Oh, I didn't even get a kit out. Jeez. Come on. Let's see here. Hmm. 
Let's go with the Banker. This is kind of a newer line. I think it's it's like a Gatsby. It's kind of a antique silver, which I think will go pretty good with this. I'm gonna zoom in just on the there we go. That would be good. Yeah. So I got to do a little bit of assembly here. Yeah, you could do some kind of a, a like, you could maybe go with like a purple, I guess red cloud, cotton ball. Get a galaxy look. All right, so how does all this work? Thing goes in there. All right, so this thing goes in there. Actually, so you, you twist the, the mechanism. The mechanism is in the, the end, the finial part. I'm wondering. I think that probably goes in there. Yeah. All right, so. I'm going to just press this, this kind of clip. I don't think the clip goes. No. I'm just going to press this thing on right now. Yeah, that's how it goes. Okay. So that's done. This thing goes on here. And ink. Okay, so. The only thing we really need to press is the, the tip on this one. I guess we gotta I guess we gotta press both sides. Uh, do I care which way? I think I like it like this. Ooh, does not want to go in. Ooh. It really doesn't want to go in. I'm going to take the tip off. I think. Ooh. <laughs> that was a tough one. Ooh. Okay. Got that part done. Now... Oh, that does need to be bent. I bent it a little bit too far up. Okay, let's see here. How do we like this? I kind of like it like that. I like these like stripes on the front. Kinda, let's see, do I like this better? I don't know, it's a tough one. I think I kinda like this. I think I'm gonna take this off and flip it here. Hopefully this one won't be so tight. Oh, it's a little tight. All right, we got that. Put the 
the ink in here. Here we go. Come on, get in the hole. There we go, it's working. See how it writes. Oh, got some fuzzy stuff on the tip there. Not too bad. What do you guys think? Hey, Jamie's here. What's up, man? That's not a bad pen. I really had zero uh, expectation on this one. And I, I, it's, it turned out fine. It's, it's, it's decent. It's not spectacular, I don't think, but certainly not just terrible, you know. Not too shabby. Could have been way worse. Some of those other ones definitely would have been if, if that would have been the one we chose. So you guys did a good job picking a good. Uh, a, a good one of those experiments, number one. Um, but like I said, uh, you know, these things kind of are, you know, I don't, I don't know. So I, I think we might, uh, I don't know, still got some extras that I might do, like I might do like a giveaway for, for patrons possibly. Um, we'll have to kind of see what I do with the rest of these things. One thing that I'm kind of curious about is this green one. I can't remember. I don't think that it got, um, I, I, it was a cactus juice, but I don't know that I baked it even, or if I did, it didn't, it never really hardened up. So that one would be kind of interesting to try out. I maybe should have tried that. What I'm kind of worried about is it's gonna just be like liquid stuff on the inside and uh, not very fun to turn, but anyway. Yeah, they always do. Uh, everybody always picks really good colors, uh, and they, they do a good job picking the right one to turn, too. That's fun. Well, let's see here. Um, yeah, I have a lot of the same ones. So uh, I, I like, there's, there's three that I, that I go to like all the time. Um, the Sierras, which includes the Banker, the Majestic, the Wall Street, um, Gatsby. Those are all the same tube, exactly. And so there's, you know, hundreds of different platings and different looks in that entire series. So that's a good one. Um, and that's, that's what this, you know, a single blank, uh, very similar form factor uh, on the, the, you know, the whole thing. Um, but slightly different platings and looks on things. Um, so that's one that I d do a lot, especially for things like this, where I'm like, let's just experiment. I'm not gonna necessarily waste my time turning two blanks. I just wanna see how does it turn. So I'll go for a Sierra style. Uh, cigar kits are awesome because there's like tons of them. Um, you know, tons of different options with different platings and all that kind of stuff. So that's a good one that I like. And I, and I like the pen. Uh, it makes a really nice looking pen. Uh, and then the other series is like the junior series um, where you, you know, like the, the rollerball fountain pens, um, two piece, all that kind of stuff. Uh, those all use the same, f there's, some of them don't, but, but many of those in the junior line of, of kits uh, use exactly the same drill bits and, and bushings and tubes and all that kind of stuff. The other thing I like about those three specifically is you can get, uh, powder coated tubes for them all um, from from Turner's Warehouse. So um, these things, uh, that way I don't have to you know mess around with painting tubes ahead of time. So you can get powder coated um, tubes 
for the that's for the Sierra. These are for the cigar. There's, and there's a couple different colors you can get. And then the Junior is another one that you can get um, pre-made. Now you know a lot of people may be like, oh, I can. <laughs> it's not that hard to just paint the tube. And I agree, but the problem is sometimes I forget to do that because I got a million other things going on and then I can't get the, the kit ready uh, you know, in time. So I really like those painted or powder coated tubes because I don't have to worry about that. Um. <clears throat> uh, to be honest, Jamie, I, I don't sell pens, <laughs> really. Um, I make blanks. So I don't really know that. I'm not a good person to answer that question. Um, you know, it, I think that there's, from what I've seen, there's a lot of people that do like a thicker pen. Um, people that have issues like arthritis and, and, and other things um, tend to like a thicker pen to write with. Um, but for like the blanks and all that kind of stuff, I, I don't know, because I, I just don't really sell enough pens. I'm, I'm in it to just kind of see what happens with these blanks, because my, my mind is more focused on blank making. Uh, yeah, the, the nautical theme. Yeah, that one's good. And, and I, you know, sometimes I'll step out and get some of the, the specialized kits and all that kind of stuff. But again, going off of what I just told Jamie, I'm not really interested in selling pens. That's not what I'm doing it for. So um, my thing is the resin casting portion of it and making blanks. And so I'm mostly just kind of testing these things. And I, I mean, I don't actively try to sell pens ever. I, I don't, I don't really... If somebody asks if I'm selling it, then I'll sell it kind of thing, you know, but I don't really do that as part of the part of the process. So I don't really I don't step out and, and mess around with a lot of the different kits because um, I don't need to really. Um, no, I don't sand coated tubes. To be honest, you can get away with not sanding tubes at all. Um, what I do is what I and I and I recommend this even if you do sand the tubes. Um, but what I, what, I, what I recommend doing is grab yourself some denatured alcohol. So I have some in a, a little jar and I'll just, you know, wet uh, one of these things and then, and then wipe it off good. And I'm wearing gloves. Um, make sure to wipe off that surface because I think that that's where a lot of people run into issues with bonding problems, gluing tubes in, uh, is actually the, there's like oils or other stuff on the tube itself on the outside and like you know because there's like machining processes and things and if there's oils on it it's not the glue's not really going to stick to that part of it so i always clean off my tubes really well with alcohol while i'm wearing gloves be right before i glue them in and my process is i, I uh, apply a thick the the starbond thick ca glue and i've been doing this exact process for many years um, I don't recommend this for wood blanks. Um, your the CA glue is going to set up on you, but for for resin blanks and all that, you know, like mixed materials where there's like, you know, 3D prints in them and, um, you know, resin. Or even if if you have stabilized wood and resin, I, I I will do this. But I use Starbond Thick, and what I do is I apply that to the tube, and then I have one of those like, you know, tube holder things. So I apply that and make sure it's spread all over the place. Um, this Starbond Thick is actually kind of gap filling. They, they call it gap filler. Um, CA glue is not particularly a gap filling glue, but the thick stuff will work fairly well for kind of gap filling. Uh, and then what I do is I douse the inside of the blank with the super fast thin. And so, you know, and then I you, you want to kind of fairly quickly um, get those things together. but um, that's my process and I never get blowouts. So, um, you know, if you're happy, if you're looking for a new way to glue tubes in, if you've been having issues with blowouts, I might recommend trying that because I switched, I used to use epoxy and a lot of people kind of swear by it, but I was getting blowouts with epoxy. Um, and I think that two things, I, you know, one of the things that you need to have is, um, well, blowouts occur from either getting a catch or, um, because of a bad glue bond where you didn't get glue all over the place. Um, if that's the case, especially with these resin blanks, the, the cutter will kind of grab into that material and it'll move and it'll blow it out. 
Um, if that stuff can kind of move around on the tube, if it's not glued down solid, especially at the ends I find is where that happens, um, you're, you're gonna get more blowouts. And so I thought, you know, in every case, you glue, you apply glue to two surfaces. So that was one of them. The other issue is for weird kind of odd materials where there may not be a very good bond between the resin and the material, um, this is kind of the other issue with it. Um, that super fast thin dousing the inside of the blank like that, that will creep into any little kind of cracks or any issues between the materials on the inside of the blank. And so it kind of, you're gluing it, you're kind of filling from the outside in, or I mean from the inside out. So anyway, uh, just a couple of, you know, things to think about. But uh, like I always tell people, if you're getting good results, you're not getting blowouts, there's no issues, you like the way that you glue your tubes in, then don't change it. There's no reason to. <clears throat> Yeah, well, yeah, and I usually use epoxy if I'm doing just, I, I don't really turn <laughs> too many just regular wood blanks, um, but I would use epoxy in that instance. Um, I don't, I never find that I, you got plenty of time, the, the, the thick. So one thing to think about with my method is, is I'm dousing the inside of the, the hole you know, the blank with the thin. But I mean, even if that set up, it's not like it's a thick, it's really not gonna cause an issue um, because you have the thick on the tube and that's gonna actually kind of lubricate it. So even if the thin set up on the inside of, and again, on, on resin, on plastics, um, even if that kind of started setting up, the thick on the tube itself is, is gonna still let you get the tube in. And that thick stuff, that'll be open for, minutes basically like that's not going to set up on you it, it's got a much longer working time the, the star bond thick and again i want to make sure that I, I always try to mention exactly which ones i'm using because you know easy bond thick that may not be that may not work the same so star bond thick and then um, like their gap filling thick and then the star bond super fast thin that's my specific method um, and then for like ca finishes i use the mercury uh, thin flex that's that's different and and to be honest i actually don't like using the mercury to glue tubes in i don't find that it, it holds as well so anyway it's it's kind of fun there's all kinds of little things but it's it, again it's <laughs> there's a thousand ways to do this and this just works for me um, and so again i always say if you're looking for something to try out or you know want to try something new or you've been having issues then give it a shot if there's no problems then don't change what you're doing because it's probably working fine for you uh, spencer's here what's up man finally tried eye candy yeah they're pretty good um i like my at this point my two favorites uh are i i like eye candy I, to be honest though, I mean, I actually use more of the, um, the P-Town Subby colors, I would say, for the most part. Um, I use a lot of them. They have excellent colors and, and they, they work good. But the thing about eye candy, they have some very specific colors that I literally couldn't live without at this point. Uh, Yamagata Red, best red mica powder on the planet, period. Um, so, you know, if you're going for like a nice bright red, um, that's perfect. So like they have these like specific colors where I literally couldn't live without them. And then eye candy, if you actually go to their website, um, they have, I don't know how many colors, but I mean, it's impossible to tell the difference between them. There's, there are so many choices for like every single color, um, with very minor differences and things. So, um, if you don't see it, uh, Turner's warehouse carries like a really good baseline, but if you actually go to the eye candy website, there are hundreds of colors, I think. Uh, and by the way, actually, speaking of that, I don't have any, I'm, I'm not affiliated with them or anything, but um, I do know that they're having a Memorial Day sale. And I think it's like 30% off site-wide. If, if, I'm, if I'm sure about that, let's see. I, I saw something. I don't need anything, of course. <laughs> I never need anything when there's a, yeah. 30% off Memorial Day sale, all products. So, uh, I'm just going to, uh, this is not an affiliate link, not affiliated, no hashtag, not sponsored <laughs> or whatever. Um, 
This is just a straight link to their website if you want to check them out. Like I said, 30% off site-wide. That's pretty sweet. Good time to stock up. Mike McEwen, what's up, man? Oh, well, that's cool. I, I, can, I can let you out. I'll, I'll give you a, a pass on that one if you had a guild meeting. <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah, even better. Cool. All right, guys. Well, I think that's all that we got. So next week we'll do something. I don't know what yet. Let me get a drink real quick while I think if there's anything else that I need to tell you. So, again, uh, let's see. Where did I... I don't even know what I did with it. Uh, if you missed it at the beginning... What the heck did I... What did I do with it? Uh, I inked up a fountain pen. Then lost... Oh, there it is. <laughs> and then I lost the fountain pen. Um, so, let's see here. Is there a, let me look at something. Nope. Uh, let me get a link for you guys, just just because. Um, here we go. Get you guys a link. Uh, but anyway, I inked up the my zebra, the zebra custom pen that I that I made a little while ago. And I, there's a link to the blanks if you wanna pick up a zebra blank. Um, but if you're interested in fountain pens and, and maybe don't know how inking them up works and all that kind of stuff, go back to the beginning after, after the stream's over. Um, check out the, like probably in the first five minutes sometime, um, I actually got, you know, like went through and showed you how fountain pens kind of work a little bit. And again, I'm not an expert. I'm just getting into this. But if you want kind of an overview, you really don't know how they work. I showed you how the converter that, that you know, holds the ink, how you connect it and how everything's kind of set up on the inside of this thing. And then actually, you know, added the ink to it. Um, it's if you're new to this, you've never seen it before, um, it's different. You know, it's not like you just drop in, like like with roller balls you, <laughs> or ball points, you just drop in a new ink re refill. Um, there are, another way to do it, um, I like the converters and, and, and actually doing it with the ink bottles and all that kind of stuff, strictly because there are hundreds of different ink colors. That's the advantage. One of one of the the big advantages to fountain pens is you could. There's like a thousand different colors. Some of them have shimmer and shine and this and all these kind of crazy things. So if you're like a writer, if you like you know if you journal or do stuff and you want to kind of spice up the colors, there are way more options and colors. Um, and you would actually just go buy a bottle of ink in that case. But if all you're doing is you just want blue, black, you know, red, um, kind of like the more standard colors, there's an easier way that's not as clunky or messy. Um, they just have ink cartridges. I don't know if I have one here. Uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, actually, maybe I do. Hold on. They also sell ink cartridges, so you don't have to mess around with all that stuff. Um... And it, and it works basically the same. You just um, attach it to the same point. There's one. Um, in, you know, to the back of the nib there. Um, and it's, it's much less messy, but you only have like, you know, black, black, blue, or red kind of options. There's not many options with that stuff. Um, but it is easier, and a lot of people like recommend when you're starting out to do that. I'm not the type of guy that's like, oh, I'm going to go for the easy way. I want to make it as difficult as possible. But like I said, it, I showed you how to do it. It's not hard or anything like that. And frankly, I'm more interested if I'm going to get into fountain pens, I want to have the option to get whatever color I want. So uh, like I said, go back and watch the first, you know, five minutes or whatever you want, if you want to see um, this, this thing getting inked up. Um, but I think that's about it. So let's see here. Yeah, I can't make it to AAW this year. I'm going to be going to the San Francisco Pen Show uh, instead, though. Um, so if anybody's in that area wants to go to a pen show, I'm going to be there. Um, and I think, uh, so Jim Hines is going to be there. Chad might actually go to it as well. Uh, there's going to be quite a few people there, I think. Not, not a ton, but, you know, a few people there. Um, so it'll be cool, cool to see anybody that's over there. And so it's in San Francisco, uh, end of August, last weekend of August, I think. Um, but yeah, I am trying to plan on go, going to the Portland AAW next year. Um, 
cool. You've moved away from, gone from car. Sorry, Donna, I'm not sure exactly what you meant. Gone. I'm not following that one. <laughs> so anyway, bring you back a pen yet? Well, I'm gonna bring myself back some pens, I think. Um, that's one of the reasons I wanna go. I wanna go and kind of meet some of the people that are in this more kind of custom fountain pen you know, it's a little bit kind of, a little bit more focused on this kind of stuff. That's that's one of the reasons I'm going. But there's all kinds of pens. There's there's uh, um, uh, you know, there's all kinds of there's roller balls and ball points. A uh, lot of the custom fountain pens, um, but there's also the vintage pens. And so I, I just want to kind of go out and see, you know, in all the supplies, the inks, the papers, the, the you know, whatever. It's like a whole big deal. So I'm, I'm excited to go see that for the first time. I've never been to a pen show before, so it should be pretty cool. So anyway, guys, I think I'm going to head out. So again, next week we'll be back at it at, uh, on Saturday, 2 p.m. We'll do some resin casting probably next week. Uh, I don't think that I have a pen. I, eventually, I wanted to start doing, uh, you know, working on some of these custom pens, but I just, I'm still trying to figure out the metal lathe, and I'm, I'm in the middle of everything. So eventually, we'll get some more of that going on. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the weekend. For those of you guys that are in the U.S., happy Memorial Day weekend. Uh, hopefully, you'll get some barbecue in or, or something fun and some some friends and family. Uh, but I guess until next time, I will see you all on the next stream, and I hope you get in the shop, get some fun stuff going on, and uh, do a little bit of resin casting too. So anyway, guys, I'll see you next week. Have a great evening.